Hey you guys, so today's video is being sponsored by Fabulosity Hair. I've got this amazing lace braided wig unit and I'm absolutely in love with it. I think you guys would definitely love this as well. So make sure you click the links below to check out all of her braided lace wigs. They're amazing units. This one is so natural and realistic looking. And I hope you guys check the link below also for my full tutorial on this video. The unit does come with bleach knots just to make it look a lot more like natural real scalp as well as that as it's human hair that is used along with synthetic hair. You can also purchase these in different colors of your choices and elastic bands and straps are included just so you can have a perfect fit. There's also wig combs included for full lace units and the processing time is only 10 to 15 working days. Shipping and delivery is 3 to 5 working days. So make sure you check the link along with that. Check out the currency tab on the top. And if you have any questions, make sure you ask. I hope you guys enjoy this video. What's up, Divas? What's up, Divas? So you guys, it's Real Talk Wednesday. And it's my birthday today. So yes, today is June 19th. So I am turning the big four, five. Okay, well, I am already four, five. Okay, so today is my birthday. I'm 45. So make sure y'all bitches wish me a happy birthday down below. It would really make my day. And yes, you guys, I am rocking some braids. For those of you guys who did not see my official braid tutorial video, then make sure you check the link below. Hopefully I remember to put it. If I haven't, then just head over to my channel. You'll definitely see it on my home screen or, you know, my homepage, whatever you want to call it. But you guys, yeah, so this video is being sponsored by Fabulosity Hair. This is where I got the braided wig made, okay? So a lot of people have been um, asking me on public are basically saying, I love your hair. Where did you get your braids done at, et cetera, et cetera. And I have to like really like get up close and then kind of like turn around in the nape area so that they can see that it's a wig, like kind of like lift it up and put my finger so that way they can see because it looks very natural. I'm going to be honest and say, this is the best damn braid wig a bitch has ever had. Like, let me tell y'all, I have had quite a few and I'm counting like the synthetic ones. You know, you can't really expect a lot from the synthetic beauty supply store ones, but you can definitely make it look natural. But hey, babe, what you doing home? Come here. What you doing here? Gates home. Hey. What you doing here? Okay, so what happened to the rest of the school day? Until when? Oh. That's so cute. Come say hi, everyone. Come on. You got to say hi. It's my birthday video. I know. So you got to say hi because it goes up on my birthday. Oh, then you got to leave. You can't even say hi. So he got to say hi. Say hi, baby. Hi, baby. No, it's girl. Say <laughs> hi. Hi, baby. Ooh. What do you want to talk to me about? Well, let's talk about it now, because start recording. Recording. Come on. Start recording first. Okay. I'll be right back, you guys. Okay, so, as I was saying, because I don't even remember what I was saying, okay, um, my husband came into the video. Okay, so, you guys will see him, see him, see him, and soon to come video. I just had to, like, basically bribe him to do, like, a clothing video with me, so we will do that soon for you guys, but as I was saying about this braid wig, because I don't even remember what I was saying, but anyway, so it's being sponsored by Fabulosity Hair, and this wig is a braided 360 lace wig, so girls, very natural looking, okay, this is the best damn braid wig I have ever seen, okay, okay, this is what I was saying, so I have gotten like quite a few braided wigs, okay, Um, and I'm going to say the synthetic beauty supply store ones, I'm going to include that in there, because you really can't expect a lot from them, because they are beauty supply store wigs, so they're not really putting a lot of love and work into this, you know, it's made on a machine, 
But those kind of worked out okay for me, especially if you know how to kind of like work around them. Now, with the actual handmade braid wigs, I have had one that came out really nice. Um, it was nice. It was decent. There weren't any baby hairs, but she did a good job on it. I think she did a really good job on it. Um, and I still have it. I don't wear it, but you know, I think she still did like an amazing job on it. And then I had one where this girl sent it to me and it smelled like shit, like straight up shit. Um, it was so itchy. Like when I say it was itchy, it was, it was just, the shit was so itchy as soon as I put it on. Like, I didn't even cut the lace off of it. It just was itching me as soon as I put it on. And I just couldn't. I just could not bear with it. And then I got this other one that was so stiff. And it just was like, girl, I can't wear this. And then I do have another one. It was like a Senegalas twist. I started doing the first portion of the video. And when I put it on, I looked like a mop. Like, she put so much fucking hair in this wig. It was enough for two wigs. And I'm still, to this day, trying to figure out what I can do to this wig to make it look, like, a million times better. Like, a natural. But I don't really think that it's going to work out for me. Plus, the thing is mad heavy. So, when you put it on... There isn't any combs, but if I was to sew combs in it, girl, I'm telling you, all my hairline would be gone probably because it's so heavy. So this one right here, which is called Tasha, let me tell y'all, she did such an amazing job on this. Now, it is made with human hair and also synthetic hair. I do, but these portions of it are synthetic and the rest is human hair. Okay, so the knots were um, bleached and there's still just like a tiny bit, a little bit of knots. The knots are so tiny, you could barely see them like concealer covers it up like let me tell y'all I have had so many people in person ask me where I get my hair braided and this one I was so happy when I got this one because like for real I hate having to style my wig every day like seriously and when you wear like a regular wig lace wig sometimes it slips back or lifts up and you just got to do a little bit more work this damn thing the way I put this on I did the ball headed cap method okay um and I put this on it has combs in it it came with an elastic band and I didn't even use the combs like for real y'all definitely have to check out the video I've had this wig on for six days now and I have not removed it it doesn't slip back it doesn't move like this wig is like amazing plus it's dumb hot out here in Arizona so trust me when I tell you she has saved my life like I wear this every damn day for the whole summer okay let me tell you I definitely will I like the style it suits me it's just so relaxing and comfortable and it makes my life so much easier like straight up it makes my life a million times easier plus I know I look cute in it but the fact that she did like an amazing job and the price is so like affordable, $150. Her wigs are priced at. Some of them are even cheaper than that. So you definitely have to check them out. The processing time is two weeks up to two weeks. You know what I'm saying? And keep in mind, like this site is based in Nigeria. Okay. So there is a currency difference. So when you look at the wigs, depending on where you're at, where you live at, if you live in the United States, if you live in the UK, if you live in Wherever you live at, make sure that on the upper right hand corner, there is a currency changer. So make sure that when you are on the website, that you switch the currency to your country. So that way you're not seeing like weird things or you think that the wig is $2 and you purchase it. But in reality, in American money, it's $150. So make sure you look on the top right corner, you'll see the currency changer and you can just click on it and make sure that you have, you know, selected the right country. But the wigs are nicely priced. She even has like regular wigs, not braided wigs. She has braided wigs. She has regular wigs. Like, listen, I'm so happy with this wig. Like, seriously, I'm like so happy with this wig. I, I kid you guys not. I don't take it off at night. I just put on like a scarf or a headband and then I put my hair together in the back. Like I'll braid it and I just put my bonnet on and girl, I just take it off in the morning and I'm good. I might have to spruce up my baby hairs just a tad bit, but I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Um, as for the baby hairs, your baby hairs are definitely not going to come like this, you know? So all the baby hairs are intact. You have to customize them, cut them down. You know what I'm saying? I pre-tweezed, I tweezed on camera. Okay, girl. I tweezed some of it out on camera because 
Listen, I ain't knocking nobody. I'm not hating, but I have seen like enough braid wig videos on YouTube to know what like, listen, girl, please, could you cut and tweeze some of those baby hairs? Like, I understand that they all there, but you do not need all of them. So I hate to see a braided wig with mad thick baby hairs. Like you got a braided wig up here and then you got a doobie straight hairstyle on the sides. Like we can't do that. Can't have two different hairstyles, girl. So I just tweezed like a bunch of them off, and this is what I, I was left with, and I'm happy with that. There's nape pairs in the back, which is cool. You could trim those to your, you know, satisfaction. But listen, I'm telling you guys, this wig is bomb as fuck. I don't give a shit what nobody think about me wearing a braid wig. I'm going to rock this shit because let me tell y'all, I have wanted braids for a minute, but I can't get braids. I mean, I could, but then I wouldn't be able to do my wig videos. So I'm glad that I got this. It makes life a whole lot easier. I don't have to sit in no chair and then I didn't have to sit here and take the braids out when it's time for me to take them out. Cause y'all would be girl like, girl, it's been five months now. Why you still got those cornrows in? Cause I, I don't like to do shit. I'm telling you guys, I don't like to do shit at all. So yes, make sure you check out Fabulosity here. I will post the information below for you guys. Um, there's really not much I can tell you guys else about the wig, except for the fact that I really, really do love it. Um, and that's about it. Um, yeah. So sips coffee to that. Other than that, my life has been easy. You know what I'm saying? If you guys are wondering what I'm going to do today on my birthday, this is what the fuck I'm going to do. Nothing. Okay. I'm not doing a damn thing. I told my husband I was going to lay in the bed all day long and watch tv i never really get to relax never so i felt like for my birthday i don't want to do shit and i feel like you know what i'm entitled to that and that's how i feel like i want to spend my birthday so you know i will definitely spend it like that i will read the comments and i will comment back to you guys because that's me laying in my bed on my phone doing nothing like i want to do so on that note we're gonna get into this real talk so, if you guys want a real talk about yourself, make sure you send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Keep in mind to make sure to change the names in the email. So, if your name is Shaquisha, but you don't want nobody to know, make sure you let me know that you have changed the names. Because if you don't, 99.9% .9 of the time, dolls, I'll change it for you. So, let's get into this real talk. I hope you guys like my shirt because it says, I am a unicorn. Yes, girl. I'm a unicorn. I'm a little chubby unicorn, but I'm a unicorn. Huh? 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 What? Damn. Damn. So I only got one real talk today because y'all bitches don't seem to like care enough to send me an email. So we're going to read this. Okay. Dear Miss April, I recently sent you a real talk email. The one about me being a housemaid, living at my in-laws, no one cleaning and my younger sister-in-law. Well, I'm writing to you again because I have another situation that I'm stuck on. My husband and I have been living at my in-laws for two months. It's a big house, but there's a lot of stuff here, like junk, mail they never throw away, etc. And girl, I'm not trying to be rude, but I think it's too dirty. First, they say it's haunted because someone committed suicide. The floors, walls, bathroom, everything is dirty. Next, there's cockroaches and not the little ones. I'm talking about two-inch motherfuckers. My husband says the roaches are from the sewer because they live close to downtown. And I know how and I know houses have bugs, but girl, I just can't stand these big roaches. They're just everywhere. My problem is this. I am currently seven months pregnant and we are planning on moving into a new home. But plans have changed and now my husband is saying we can just live here at my in-laws. His parents would move out and his brother plus his family and us would stay here. Wait, his parents would move out and his brother plus his family and us would stay here. April, I am not comfortable bringing home my newborn here with all these damn roaches and extra stuff. I doubt his parents would deep clean the home or fix it up before they leave. My mom said her and my aunt could deep clean the house, but they got me fucked up. My mom's not going to clean my in-law's house like, what the fuck? 
My mother also offered my old room. I could fix it up and do whatever I want to it. It's a small room, but at least I could feel more comfortable and know everything is clean. My parents live like five minutes away, but my husband doesn't want to move there. I don't mean to sound like I'm too good to live here or I'm taking our child away from him. My question is, do I just suck it up and stay at my in-laws with my husband or start new at my mom's with or without my husband? I hope to hear back because I honestly feel lost. If I just move out of my husband's will make a big, if I just move out, my husband will make a big deal and explode like if I'm trying to divorce him. But if I do, it's what's best for my son and I. Girl, I'm lost in the sauce. Laugh out loud. Thank you for your time, and I'll be ready for Real Talk Wednesdays. Much love. Take care. Well, let's see here. First of all, we're going to call her Natalie. So basically, Natalie and her husband have been living at her husband's house, his her husband's parents' house, for the past few months now. And I do remember the story which she sent to me. And being that her and her husband are living here, she's also pregnant, and there are other people living in the household as well. So it's her, her husband, her pregnant belly, her 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 in laws, which is her her mother and father in law, her brother in law, her sister in law, and God knows who else. Oh yes, plus the roaches. Okay, first of all, let me tell you this. I understand that people do have clutter and they have a lot of shit. Sometimes I go through that shit where I can't stand to have too much, even if it's in my motherfucking garage. You know what I end up doing? I throw shit away. I cannot stand to have too much shit. I cannot stand to have shit all over the motherfucking place. Shit collects dust and on top of that shit attracts all kind of bugs and shit like that. Plus, I don't really want my house to look like I'm a hoarder. You know what I'm saying? When you have too much shit, you have too much shit. I cannot stand to watch some people's videos and they have like Dollar Tree videos and they do Dollar Tree videos all the time and they got shelves behind them with all these motherfucking knickknacks from the Dollar Tree. It's cluttered, okay? It's too much shit. Throw it the fuck away. Give it away. Give it to somebody, okay? But don't just keep it all in your house. Plus, on top of that, you don't, not only do you have a whole bunch of shit, but you got dirty walls, dirty floors, dirty furniture. Like that's disgusting. Okay. Me for one, when I go into someone's home, okay. Take for example, this, when I used to live in New York and I used to work for this humongous insurance company called Fidelis, I worked for them for 11 years and I was senior VP for marketing, which meant that I had to go out into the field and take applications from people people who needed Medicaid, people who needed health insurance. I did home visits. Instead of them having to go to social services, I would come to them, okay? Make their life a whole lot easier. So that meant that I was going to different homes on a daily basis, or I was meeting you in public. A lot of these homes that I went to, not a lot, but I do remember quite a few where I've walked in and it smelled like cat piss. I've walked in and I've seen roaches and I just stood and did the application because God forbid I sit down and a roach crawl on me, then I'm carrying that shit at home. And I'm sorry. Yes, I have grown up in New York City and yes, I'm a project kid, meaning I lived in housing, the housing authorities. I lived in housing projects, you know, affordable housing. I lived in affordable housing. And you know, in New York City, we already got rodents and we got roaches. So yeah, I did live in the projects and yeah, we did have roaches. Okay. But that don't mean a bitch like roaches. I'm scared of them. I don't like them. Okay. I don't like roaches and I'm pretty sure they don't like me. I don't like mice either. Scared to death of rodents. Okay. But I don't really want to go to someone's house and see a roach crawling on the wall because once I do, a girl be like kind of skittish, like, please, Mr. Roach, just stay over there. I don't like roaches. So me personally, if you got roaches in your house, a bitch ain't coming over. And how about this? Bitch, don't come over to my house neither. So she ain't just got those little roaches, regular roaches. She got the motherfuckers like we call water bugs or out here, they call them cockroaches. <laughs> either way, hold on. So, sorry about that, you guys. That was my good friend, Shay. So, anyway, so like I was saying, like, you got roaches, like, you know, she, they, she got the big water bug roaches, the big roaches. Like, okay, first of all, I can somewhat deal with the little ones, but then when you come with those big water bugs, cockroaches, honey, we can't, mm -mm, listen, 
I'm far past that. So you got dirt, you got clutter, you got roaches and cockroaches, okay? And you got a whole bunch of people living in the house. And so, you know what I'm saying? Natalie and her husband, they were about to move out. They was going to get into their own place. So that way they got, you know, room for their little baby that's coming. Things change. The husband is like, well, we could just live here at my parents' house and my parents are going to move out. But you're still going to be stuck there with his brother and his sister, like, um, and the roaches. Okay. So here's my thing why we just can't go get our own shit still you know what i'm saying like i'm sorry but once you have like a mess load of roaches and shit they they like take over it's hard to get rid of roaches like seriously i'm not saying that they the, the worst thing in the world but i'm pretty sure that nobody wants to live with roaches like on, let's be on the serious level like i mean like come on now Nobody wants to live with motherfucking roaches. They didn't already took over the house. Like, they there to stay. They, it's not like one a day she sees. She sees, like, quite a few. That's, listen, girlfriend, I'd have been gone. I wouldn't even gave two fucks if my mother offered me my room or not. A bitch is leaving. If I got to sleep at the motherfucking hotel and pay for that shit on a daily basis, a bitch is there. I'm not about to bring myself home to a house full of roaches along with a house full of motherfuckers and a house bunch, a house full of clutter, okay? Some people are very comfortable living in filth. Some people are very comfortable living with other things that don't pay bills, like roaches. Like, um, if you're not paying no bill, you cannot live here. I'm sorry, but you cannot live here. No, thank you. And now it's like to the point where Natalie is like probably overwhelmed, exhausted, stressed the fuck out. I understand where she's coming from. So she's debating whether or not to go stay with her mother in her old room with her baby or stay there with her husband at the Roach Motel. Let me tell you something. It's about being happy and healthy, okay? Because for one, living in a house full of clutter and dirt is not really a healthy environment. Along with that, roaches, cockroaches, water bugs, they have all types of diseases. And some people fail to realize that, that they carry diseases, whether you want to think so or not. Not only that, but having too much shit in your house carries all type of bacteria, you know what I'm saying, and germs, which in turn will make it to where the point where we have a newborn baby coming into the household whose immune system is really not that strong. And and why subject a newborn baby to filth when you can go and live somewhere else that is a more cleaner and healthier environment? You know what I'm saying? Like, your husband needs to understand, we have to put the baby first. And I get that he probably doesn't want to come to your parents' house because he may feel a little bit uncomfortable. Because for one, he is a man. So it's probably a lot easier for him at his own home. But then he has to realize, like, listen, this is not a good environment for the baby, especially the baby. And not to mention a pregnant woman. So we got this girl, she cleaning out the people. She's breathing in all kind of dust and fumes and bacteria and germs. And she's being irritated by motherfucking roaches and shit. Like, I'm sorry, but I couldn't live in filth. And your husband, he he's, he he really needs to realize, like, he's kind of being selfish. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's really, to me, I'm taking it as he's being selfish. Like, because he feels like, well, we could just put off living in our own house and just live here at our parents' house and let them move out. That's not the manly thing to do. That's not the mature thing to do. Now, granted, you know what I'm saying? When you get married, that means you want to start your own family or you have your own family. Whatever the case may be, it's you and your wife, you and your husband. You, you guys are a couple. You guys, you guys too. You know what I'm saying? You are a unit, a unity, a unit, whatever the fuck you want to call it. When you get married, you should definitely have your own place with your spouse. You know what I'm saying? I understand that sometimes, you know what I'm saying, finances could be a problem, pro problematic, you know what I'm saying, to where sometimes you do have to live with in-laws or family members after you get married. But when you, when you realize that you're about to get married, but you still have no place to live, then maybe you should rethink things. Like maybe we shouldn't spend money on this extravagant wedding. Maybe we should take this extravagant money 
and use it for something that is worth it, like an apartment or a house for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times what I notice with people is they get married and they go and they live with their parents because they want to save up for their own house. Sometimes shit takes steps. You know what I'm saying? So what I mean by that is you get married, you want a house. Sometimes you can't afford a house. You got to get an apartment. Okay. That's like, I want Louis Vuitton, but my budget only calls for Michael Kors. So you got to get Michael Kors or you got to save up. You know what I'm saying? But you can't some always like interfere with other people's lives, especially when you marry. When you marry, that means you grown. When you grown, you should have your own. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I really think like Natalie's husband is being a little bit immature and a little bit selfish. So maybe things didn't fall through correctly for them to get their own house. You know what I'm saying? Their own house. But if it didn't fall through for y'all to get your own house, then maybe y'all should get your own apartment. A two-bedroom apartment is easily. You know what I'm saying? This child that y'all have together is not everybody else's child in the household. It's you and your husband's child, which means you, your husband, and your child need to have your own shit. And this is what you need to tell your husband. Granted, we couldn't get our own house, maybe finances, maybe shit didn't fall, fall through right, whatever the case may be. You can easily go rent an apartment, okay? You got to start off somewhere. You don't want to start off with living with other people. Granted, it might be temporarily, but that let's not make this a long-term thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, granted, everybody need help sometimes, but we cannot continue to take the help. We got to learn to help ourselves. So with that being said, sometimes people, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes people, they got a, they got a Budweiser budget, but they want to have motherfucking Dom Perignon. Man. You got to take that Budweiser and be happy with that shit. Just like maybe Natalie's husband and her don't have house budget, but they sure can have apartment budget, which means this. When Natalie, husband, and baby are in their own shit, Natalie and baby can comfortably live in happiness, more privacy, more quiet, a more healthier environment, okay? If it were my son and he came to live with me with his two kids and his wife, now granted, they have already done that. They were with me for a couple of months. And after a while, I was like, okay, you know what? It's time for y'all to get your own shit. And that's exactly what they did. Don't get it twisted. I was more than happy to help them. But you got your own little family, which means you need to live in your own little shit. Granted, of what size that motherfucker is, you need to live in that shit. Whether it be a one-bedroom, a two-bedroom, or a studio, it's your shit. And this is what you need to tell your husband, Natalie, that you and him need to get your own shit. Like, I understand shit didn't go right for you to get your own house. And it's not all about houses all the time. Some people fail to realize, like, oh, I want a house. Oh, I want a house. Everybody may want a house. Everybody may not want a house. I'm going to be honest. I live in a house. You know what I'm saying? A four-bedroom house. Do I own it? No, bitch. I pay rent for it. Granted, maybe one day I would like to have my own house. But then I stop and I think to myself, well, April, if the water tank go or something break, bitch, you're going to have to pay for that shit. But if the water tank go and something don't work right in here, you don't got to pay for it. You just call up the management company and tell them, and they come and fix the shit. It's that simple. And what if I don't want to stay here? Never mind all that. Maybe I don't want to put myself into debt right now. Maybe later on down in the future I do. Maybe I want to get my shit together a little bit more before I decide on that. Either way... I wouldn't want to take my shit and my kids and live with my mama until I decide to get it together. I'm going to just pay some rent on some shit. I'm going to tell y'all. 
when you've grown and you have kids and you've got another spouse, you got to do grown folks things. And true indeed, it's nice to be gifted a home. But when you got a home that's gifted to you with a whole bunch of other shit included in it that you really don't want to deal with, don't you think that it's a lot easier for everybody just to do what you need to do that's best for yourself? Now, granted, Natalie's mother offered her her old bedroom. She's thinking about moving in. Me personally, I think what's ever best for Natalie and her baby is in my best interest. You know what I'm saying? And my best interest is definitely not with the roaches at the Roach Motel. No. I think that for me, her best bet would be for her and her husband to have their own apartment. You know what I'm saying? But if that doesn't fall through, then I think that the next step for me would be to say to Natalie, maybe you do need to stay with your mom. And maybe that will open up your husband's eyes and mind a little bit more to where he realizes like, hey, maybe my wife is really unhappy here. That's why she left. Because right now at this moment in time, he probably really feels like you're comfortable. And even if you're complaining, you still may be somewhat comfortable because you're still there. You know what I'm saying? This is what he's seeing. Sometimes we don't think like that as a person, like, well, she's still here, so she's satisfied. But satisfaction isn't always like the best thing. Sometimes we have to go past satisfaction. And your satisfaction is being somewhere that's clean and it's more comfortable. And it's a healthy environment for your new baby. It's not fair to bring your child home to a roach infested home. Like, okay, so we got this little newborn laying in the crib, laying on the bed, wherever. And mommy is away right now. She might have wanted to use the bathroom. She might have wanted to heat up a bottle, whatever. You know what I'm saying? She just stepped away for a brief second. The baby's not going to fall off the bed or nothing like that because the baby's new. And as the mother is away, stepped away for a second, here goes a cockroach. Because they run fast, y'all. Okay. And it done crawled in the baby's ears, the baby's mouth, whatever. Now you've got this poor child. You know what I'm saying? a roach on them. Like, nobody wants to walk in a room and see a roach crawling on a child. Like, the reaction that would be would probably be something that, God forbid, I would hate to walk in the house and then walk in the room and see a roach crawling on my child. I'm pretty sure Natalie would explode at that moment and then make the whole environment an uncomfortable, awkward situation. So to avoid all of that, because I know if it were me and I walked in the bedroom and I saw a cockroach crawling on my motherfucking child, I'm going off on everybody in the house because I'm, listen, this is not my house, y'all dirty motherfuckers up in here and there's roaches all over the place and you, my husband, baby daddy, got me up in this motherfucker still when we could have been left. I probably would say all type of things, all type of things would spew out of my mouth, obscenities, and you would just be like, damn, it was just a roach. Yes, it was a fucking roach. It was just a roach. We could avoid this situation and have been gone. So me personally, I really honestly feel like, Natalie, you need to sit down with your husband and inform him, talk to him about the health issues and what I just said about the roach crawling on the baby, okay? And let him know, listen, it's great that you were gifted. You let him know he was gifted, not we. Don't say we, because bitch, you don't want that motherfucking gift. You were gifted this home, but it's not right for us. And I would feel a whole lot more comfortable in our own, even if it was a one bedroom apartment, because the baby don't even need its own room yet. That would be great because it's our own. And when we have our own family, we need to have our own shit because we are parents. We are mature. We are adults. Let's play house like an adult. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know about y'all, but listen, let me tell you something. I don't like bugs. I don't like roaches. I don't like rodents. I don't like anything besides what's supposed to be in my home. Point blank period. And I, I, I just can't tolerate roaches. That's I'm sorry, but that's one bug that I just do not fucking like at all. I despise them. I I don't try I try not to hate shit, but I hate them. And I'm pretty sure that I am not the only person that's sitting here feeling like that about motherfucking roach. Like who the fuck? So and, and on top of that, 
Not only does she have to live with the roaches, but she has to clean up after them. She got to clean up after other people. You got all this junk and dirty shit around. Like, who lives like that? And trust me, I have seen many of houses and apartments that I've walked into. And I just be like, damn, how the fuck do you live like that? How do you walk around and sit comfortably watching television like this? How do you let your home get like this? Like, seriously, I, I can never understand how people could just live in filth. Like, seriously, I'm not OCD clean. I do clean every day, but I'm not OCD about the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. I, but I'm not a slob. Like, seriously. And I know when to throw shit out. Like, I think people hate me in here for that because you could be playing with something like da da da, and I will take that shit and throw it right in the garbage. If I tell you more than twice to pick your shit up, then obviously you don't want it. Then I'm throwing it in the garbage, and that's what I do here. Then let it not be some expensive shit. I wouldn't dare. You know, it all depends on what it is. But if I keep telling you to pick your toy up, pick your toy up, pick your toy up, and you done put it from one spot to the other and you never picked it up or never picked it up, I'm throwing your shit the fuck away. I could care less. And then you obviously didn't want it. Okay. Obviously you didn't want it. So I'm throwing shit in the garbage. And I just really cannot understand why people can just live like in filth like. You know what I'm saying? I don't get it. But anyway, you guys, let Natalie know. I got to go. See you guys on another video. And yeah, check all the information for this Tasha week. Yeah.